Not a dinosaur story, though, because that movie fucking sucked. What was uh, that one about? Other than a dinosaur and a story? Uh, it was about dinosaurs coming back to Earth. And one of them was voiced by John Goodman. That's, that's basically it. What, 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 what was John Goodman? Is he a stegosaur, a brontosaur, a pterodactyl? He was a Tyrannosaurus. He was a Tyrannosaurus Sex. <laughs> Scorch. <laughs> Let's put the X in Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> Not as catchy as the original. There we go. <laughs> and we got fucking Scorch there. I should. No, wait. no, nobody who will ever who will ever show up in this chat and scroll back up knows who Scorch is. This is an utterly <laughs> worthless thing to share with this audience. <laughs> well, I think, Will, we have our topic for what we're going to discuss while I play Earthbound. <laughs> we're going to discuss the glory that is Scorch. The fact that this man exists and why he is an American hero and a national treasure. Besides, like, what? we've got probably like five, ten minutes before the email goes out, so... I know Scorch is a very specific permutation of his character and his humanity. And that is the host of PFG TV. <laughs> but that's not all there is to Scorch, though, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, some are odd and some deranged stories that are very strange. He is the host of Weird News, Scorch. So that's, a seg- that's a segment on PFG TV, though. That's still under the PFG TV umbrella. What, what what about the man before he, he created PFG TV, which stands for pretty effing good TV? Is it, is it pretty freaking good TV? It depends on the time period. <laughs> he ever say it was pretty fucking good TV? Yeah. Was he ever allowed to say that? Probably not on air, but, you know, like, it, it was... <laughs> are, we, are we talking about when Scorch was, was pitching it off... Offset, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna have pretty fucking good TV, yeah. <laughs> PFG, pretty safe, it's pretty fucking good, pretty fucking good, yeah. <laughs> the horrible scorch. Yeah, no, 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 you gotta do PFG TV and get on the Jesus. weird news, yeah, weird news. Total news radio, total news. Although, Damn it, now that really just makes me want to see fucking Scorch <laughs> on news radio as and doing it as totally news radio. Totally, oh. Stop it. My creation. My creation. We can do it. It's real. Yeah, it's totally real because it's totally news. But I mean, but I mean, you forget like the most important things about Scorch. Well, <laughs> like for example, what is important about Scorch? Well, according to Scorch, he's the guy. Who got Triple H into professional wrestling? In fairness, that is some pretty that that is some corroborating evidence right there, and that's your <laughs> proof. But like, he he was certainly around for the lean days of the Triple H character. And as you can see by the picture, which is in the chat right now, he clearly, clearly got Triple H into the professional wrestling business. I mean, <laughs> you know, three gimmicks in. Yeah. Well, I mean, back then, Triple H was terrorizing, and Scorch was Vito Carlucci. What the, who is Vito Carlucci? Scorch! That was Scorch's wrestling gimmick, Vito Carlucci. Wait, was Scorch oh, wait. actually on shows? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Did I say was? Because I meant is. And of course, you scorch this for the air, weren't you? You weren't gonna show me this beforehand. 
Well, of course Scorch was on shows. Like, he he was trained by Killer Kowalski. He played Captain Lou Albano's young up-and-coming son. <laughs> Vito Carlucci? <laughs> Interesting name for Captain Lou Albano's son to have. Well, his young and up-and-coming son. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think we're focusing on the wrong part of that statement. Does that mean, I'm, not de- I'm not debating that George was an up-and-coming guy in the wrestling scene. I'm debating the sun aspect of it and how it makes zero sense. Well, either way, right now, um, we're going to see Patty Rotten in her jail cell. Totally nude. Totally <laughs> nude. Are you Ian Rotten? Ian Rotten, I'm so glad it's you. I had a dream that a boy named Ian Rotten was my destiny. I know it's hard to believe. Therefore, I knew you would rescue me. If you didn't come, I would have had to try to bust out of here. You can't open the door. You have to get the key from Carpentier. He's got it hidden away. I heard Carpentier can control lightning. In that case, you should wear this Franklin badge, okay? Ian Rotten got the Franklin badge. Just kick butt like sh- and she knows I can. And there's Pokey. That the, that's the photographer guy, right? No. Pokey was your fat neighbor, the fat neighbor kid, who's just an evil son of a bitch. He's a secondary member of a cult. And he's not going to fight me, but he's going to have two cult members and a bird fight me. Oh my god, they gave him a bowl cut to make him evil. I hate that. (laughs) That's offensive. I'm offensive, and I find this morbidly obese. Hey guys. Hey, Seth. Hey, Seth. Why? Why couldn't they give him names? Why they just? Why could it be insane and cult? Insane cultist Bob. Well, <laughs> insane cultist Dave. Because then they would have to program the names into the game, and that would take up memory. Like it's three additional letters. Will? No, I don't think you understand. And this is. I don't. You're right. I don't. Okay. Like this is a very legitimate point about old uh, video games. <laughs> Is that text in, a, like, your NES and Super Nintendo era games, like, text and numbers and all that, that takes up a fuckload of space because it has to be programmed exactly right so the text is displayed properly. Like, well, okay. Then I'm going to make an alternate point that I, that I, I think stands up. Why do they have to be insane cultist? If you're a cultist, you're probably already insane. They should just be cultist, Bob. No. Cultist Dave. Well, I know lots of laid-back cultists. Oh, no, you do. <laughs> well, yeah, I live in Kentucky. Does have a valid point. <laughs> God damn it, roll fizzle beef. It is not green, green. It is blue, blue. I know exactly what you're referencing, and we will get to green, green. But damn it, the chant is blue, blue. And the chant will always be blue, blue. Uh, now, should I steal a banana or uh, some eggs from this fruit stand? I mean, you should steal everything. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna steal a raw egg and uh, eat it in a little bit. <laughs> eat the raw egg. Yeah. How much? How much do I want to pay? How much do I want to pay? I will pay zero dollars, and I've got a raw egg. Um, hey, as you exit, sweet deal. <laughs> blue, blue. I wish for everything in this world to become blue. All right, we're gonna go to the cult house, and this is uh, the happy, happy cult. And they are very clearly modeled after the KKK in terms of look. Okay, I'll address the elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, there is one thing they have different from the KKK. Yes. Yeah, so- <laughs> I'm noticing right off the top of my head, and it's not that their heads look like the poop emoji. Dare say it's the color. I feel like the color is probably important. 
Oh, this yeah. is like this is like a bad student section gimmick at Rep Arena. I'm sorry. Oh no, it is. <laughs> it is totally like just the they, lamest. They look like slimes from Dragon Warrior. Are we acknowledging that hashtag BBN, hashtag Big Blue Nation is a cult? So I'm all on board with that. Yes, it is. We hashtag protect our we, we we protect our guys like proud Papa Wolves. <laughs> on oh. Wolves in Kentucky. <laughs> Got into a fight with one. And the only different the reason why you can tell they aren't KKK members is that they have a nice uh, puffball at the end of their hood, and they're wearing a tie. In the Japanese version, neither of these occur. Boise State, Boise State, God damn it, that's a shame. <laughs> they're still blue, though, right? Yes, they're still blue. Like, and Jap they're still holding paintbrushes. Oh, no, that's not a paintbrush, is it? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Not cool. Not cool. Alright. Yep, um, definitely see the problem with that. Um, What's the problem? Um, <laughs> they're pretty much the one thing that separates them from the KKK is the color of their robes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fucked up, Japan. God, why can I... Yeah, uh, basically, there's only certain one of these that you can talk to, and they... walk faster than, like, the other ones. And I just cannot remember... Oh, god damn it, blue lives do matter. And I've got three cultists to fight off, which is fun. It's one back to normal. Use the pain attack, and I'll knock him back to normal. Oh, god damn it! Another cultist. Seriously, I don't like this game. Stop calling all these cultists. I just want to get and defeat their evil boss. <sighs> but yeah, like it, it is perfectly tasteful. Of Japan, the uh, least offensive nation out there, the great nation that gave us the character of Pizza Pasta uh, to just make a enemy that is clearly a Ku Klux Klan member. <sighs> For fuck's sake, really? Insane yeah, Cultist no. E. Okay, fine. Just two more hits, one more hit, there we go. Done. Blue lives do matter. At least I level up. Ooh, power of PSI meth B. How meth's involved? Well, yeah, no, no, no. Meth was always involved. Meth was his, uh... Remember we got to pick what's the coolest thing in the world and we picked meth? Oh, yeah. You can name your moves, right? <laughs> you can name that one. Ah, green, green. There he is. He's still new at this. Now he's got it. It's blue, blue. Okay, I got a croissant, a skip sandwich, and a chick. Well, that's odd, but okay. I, 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 God, I just wanted a fresh egg to eat, like a raw egg, and now it's gone. Learning to whistle, and I'm yep, not. Sandwich. I'm not going to heaven for some reason. Skip sandwich is the local weather guy, right? <laughs> yeah, that actually is a perfect local weatherman name. Like, skip sandwich here, and I tell you, you're gonna be able to boat out on the lake this weekend. So we got a cold front coming in. Burr. Skip. Skip sandwich sounds like a big, uh, a big radio jock. Oh, Skip sandwich sounds like the fucking stunt brain on a morning zoo show. 
And we'll be hearing from Skip Sandwich. Skip, what you got going on? Well, hey, hey, you got some crazy good fun going on here down at the racetrack. I'll be here until 4 p.m. and you can get your K107 bumper sticker from me, Skip Sandwich. We're having a good time with the tailgate. Who's your favorite rock station? Um, rival rock station from down the street. <laughs> uh, this is Carpentier, or Carpenter, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and he's got the evil Mani Mani statue, which if you remember from way back, like months ago when I first started playing it, uh, this was being dug up in Onet, and yeah, so that statue is influencing another person to be evil. So, if I have the Franklin badge, this guy is a piece of cake, because most of his attacks are lightning based, and the Franklin badge reflects that. So... <laughs> yeah, that... He was actually an easier battle than the last cultist I faced, which is nice. He just wanted to have a normal life, and now I can go rescue Patty Rotten. <laughs> Good times. But back to Scorch! Because I think most people who are here early on in the stream miss that. Scorch is a national treasure and an American hero. And everyone out there should find some Scorch video or Scorch audio and give it a listen and just enjoy how great Scorch is. Scorch is a radio personality who's been on the air in Boston and Manchester, New Hampshire and Syracuse and our good buddy Foster actually had Scorch lecture at his college in his broadcasting class or in his journalism class. Kyle, isn't Scorch based in San Diego now? Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah good for him, find, finding a new radio gig. <laughs> was he was he in between gigs when he got in the San Diego gig, or did he still have one? Um, I think he was in between gigs. So he found one on the other side of the country. Yeah, and he, he moved gotta respect, gotta respect the effort. He moved there with his two dogs and... Now he has the Scorch Mikey and Rush show. I think at least he does. He did block me on Facebook. <laughs> for, for probably a very good reason. Oh, yes. No, like, he would do his... Uh, probably eight minutes. <laughs> he would do his poll a day, and he would put nothing dirty, and I would answer with something that was dirty. I'm Give sorry. Give me an example, please. Okay. <laughs> you know, four out of five men... Think about this more than seven times a day. Nothing dirty, though. And, like, the point is, is that you're supposed to be thinking, oh, the answer is going to be sex. And then the answer is taking a vacation. Like, it's, it's dumb, dumb radio hackney shit like that. So dumb, I would. Re dumb radio dumb. I mentioned dumb. So I would just uh, reply with, you know, four out of five people think about this seven times a day. Nothing dirty, though. And I would say strangling a drifter in order to maintain an erection. Is, is it the same Scorch that, that did this thing called PFG TV? Yes, it is that same Scorch. PFG TV is a phenomenal, phenomenal show, and I highly recommend anyone watch that because you'll get to see all his classic segments, 
like weird news. Which is him just I, I just I just found a bunch of OB and Anthony just go into town on this guy. Oh yes. That that that's, is that is why that's why we all know him. Yes, of course it is. Like cause Brian formerly unabashed big OB and Anthony fan. Um Will and I like and Fitz as well Fitz was as well. Uh I think Will and I got in later because of them. Yeah, I got in like I started listening to them after like my senior year of, of college, my first year as like a, a working person, like 2013, 2012. So well well after the peak. Oh god, yeah. And then pretty much only thing I listen to now that's even like remotely close is Bennington. That's just you know when I go to when I'm in my car going to work, I don't seek it out. Just, if it just happens to be on, I'll turn it on. Yeah, it's because Ronnie B is awesome. Awesome. Oh, Josh, so by, the way you got in, that, you got like in like in it. Show. That's a good show. If you, if you do want to listen to a show, you can do a lot worse, but it's just not the same. It's not as good. Nothing, nothing as good as it used to be. Things change. Get off my lawn. Yeah, yeah. Yada. Wait, we're talking about Wrestling Observer Radio now? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dave Meltzer. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. How you doing? How you doing, everybody? Dave Meltzer. How you doing? How you doing? Oh. I'm going to find the Dave Meltzer Titan Tron now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, Dave Meltzer Titan Tron, not as good as any David Flair parody Titan Tron, including, but not limited to, Basketball Titan Tron, where it's Batista. Can, can you just overlay that over the video game audio? <laughs> <laughs> just to play it out? What, the Dave Meltzer the, Titan Tron? Yeah, so, because it does, like, it's not just the Dave and Floor music, it includes clips of Dave. So, yeah, why not? Dave Meltzer specifically. We'll listen to this right now. Just, just to let everybody enjoy it. <laughs> let me know when you start recording. I'm, I'm already playing it, though. for computer graphics. There's no food. Oh, God. Dave Meltzer. And at least that Titantron is not as bad as uh, when he got the que immortal question about Monty Burns buying Monty Burns' house being bought by Brett the oh, Hitman Hart. <laughs> and for as much as... We will goof on Dave Meltzer. Dave Meltzer fucking rules. Like, it, I highly recommend anyone out there that's a wrestling fan, watch the uh, Dave Meltzer, Chris Hero, Rob Naylor shoot. Because it is insane. Um, just completely ridiculous shit stories. Uh, apparently Nobuhika Takata was Hulk Hogan's young boy back in the day. And when UWFI was the biggest promotion in Japan, and Hulk Hogan went back like in 94, uh, when he called the WWF title belt a trinket... And said he wanted to get the IWGP title belt because it's the only true uh, world championship in wrestling. Um, 
So, Takata is fucking riding high as the top draw in UWFI, and, like, Hogan sees it, and it's like, Oh my god, it's Takata! Wait, Takata is the top star in Japan? Oh, Jesus, the business must be terrible! <laughs> Which, uh, Takata was not known for being really that good of a worker. And an even worse MMA fighter. He just fucking... That UWFI and his shoot style just fucking really cashed in at the perfect time for it. Even the if whole you... thing? What? First class. Gosh, <laughs> God damn Isn't it. Isn't he? What? Takad is in the first class of the Observer Hall of Fame. I believe so, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming the way you described it, is, is it as a promoter or is or as a fighter, as a wrestler, like uh, I, I would a was, combination. I would assume it's as a wrestler, like because I mean, like he, he was. I'm not saying he's fucking big daddy levels of drizzling shits, like because no one is that bad. But it says, he, it says wrestling and promoting for starting the UW, UW for starting UWFI. Yeah, I mean, for a fucking good four years, there was the biggest promotion in professional wrestling. I mean, it's... It's, I mean, not not to say that the same style of wrestler can just be anything but it, but I mean, like, Onita's in Observer Hall of Fame in large part because he took an indie promotion in Japan and drew 50,000 people. Yeah, like, but Onita's... Selling him stirred like that. But Onita's a really good wrestler. Yeah, I know. That's that's a, that's why that's a lot. That's a big difference between the two. I understand. I, I get that, but like, <laughs> like I, I want. Like, is it absurd to say that like Onita, it, like the best comparison is if like some if is if like Paul Heyman took ECW and ran like a gigantic stadium show, or Not had the capability of it. Um, well, not a gigantic stadium show. Several gigantic stadium shows over the course of many years. And, like, consi he, like, there was, like, a period where he consistently drew, like, 10,000 houses in the U.S., too. Although that was, that was in large part due to co-promoting with, um, UWA? What, are you talking about, uh, fucking, are you talking the about shows. FMW? Yeah, the FMW LA shows. FNWLA shows weren't really that... didn't draw that well. I thought they drew, like, 10,000. No. Really? You're thinking... You're thinking uh, more fucking the AAA LA shows. Those were insane draws. Like, 10, 12,000 people at shows. Like, FMW did not draw in the U.S. I'm... <laughs> yeah, okay. Although I will say that I'm not, in, I wouldn't be as impressed by by AAA drawing 10 to 12 thousand in the U.S. You know, it is very impressive, as I would be by FMW doing that. Oh yeah, no, FMW doing that would just be. I insane. mean, it's, it's a Japanese promotion coming into L.A. It's, <laughs> it's it's different than a lucha promotion coming into L.A. You know, now I'm kind of just fantasy booking or just picturing this thing of like. ECW in their prime doing veteran stadium in Philadelphia. I think that if if he had been financially able to do it, which yeah, no way. He could have done it. I think he absolutely could have done it. I think he could have well, drawn Yeah, the, I mean Hayden had fucking talks about doing like a ballpark show, like an actual not wrestling at a ballpark. Hi uh Global Force Wrestling, how you doing? But, like, an actual okay. ballpark show. I mean, okay, I know what you mean, but, like, filling up a minor league stadium, like, for a stadium show for Heyman, would have been substantial. Like, I know I know it's it's it, it's fun to bash on people that run, like, minor league stadiums, but if you're actually able to run, like, a ballpark brawl-style show and, like, and, and, get a, and get a really good house for it, that is impressive. 
well, yeah, my point wasn't like they're they're drunk. not they're not necessarily the tiniest. They're not necessarily as tiny as people think they are, and it's like a good still eight to ten thousand like person say, especially nowadays. Yeah, but the point is, is that Global Force isn't drawing nearly eight to ten thousand. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I I understand that they're not they're not filling up those those minor league stadiums by any stretch of the imagination. You know, in 1996, uh, ECW probably could have drawn more people in a better stadium than the Phillies did. <laughs> That's a good joke, Lenny Dykstra, you old creep. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you talking about Lenny Dykstra, a man addicted to Twizzlers and Diet Coke? <laughs> yeah, same guy. Okay. God, I'm tr- what fucking webs- does anyone remember the, uh, website that had the... Lenny Dykstra might not be the worst boss in the world, but he's damn sure trying, like, expose on his fucking shitty magazine? I gotta find that again, because it is one of the most fascinating reads you'll ever read about a, uh, former athlete, and just how terrible they are like uh <laughs> Lenny Dykstra apparently made millions off of uh, car washes and blew all that money and essentially resorted to doing a Ponzi scheme oh good old Global Force Gold everyone remember Global Force Gold <laughs> Will, did you ever invest in Global Force Gold? I did not invest in Global Force Gold. Why wouldn't you invest in Global Force Gold? If you did, you got an autographed picture of Jeff Jarrett. See, that was tempting. That was very tempting to get an autographed picture of Jeffrey Jarrett, but I decided to pass on Global Force Gold. I just, I'm, I can't make that kind of investment right now. <laughs> God, what a, what a scam. Jesus. I'm not going to pretend to play all on it. Gold before his gold is ridiculous. Oh, no, I wasn't it's saying... A it's a shame that that, that that somebody like Jeff Jarrett... Like, I know we're not, like, all, all kind, but, like, I kind of feel bad that's what he's resorting to. No, I was... Way, I, going... I, we thank everybody for coming out to listen to us talk about something that has nothing to do with video games. That's... Like, I... I could talk about Earthbound all day and everything, but, like, I, I, I've spent more than enough time talking about it. I'm much happier to read that Lenny Dykstra is a fucking male escort now, like Buff Bagwell, but without the sex. At least according to himself on Howard Stern. That is creepy, though, because... I think I think he's in it for the six. That would make the most sense. Oh, jeez. I mean, that, that's going to be a fun book. I may have to take a look at that book. Yep, like, I will definitely borrow it from a library. Like, he's currently a gigolo. That's what we're, we're to understand about Lenny Dykstra. According to himself, ah, oh, shit. Does that mean Vivid's gonna get on the phone and say, Hey, Lenny! <laughs> Wanna make some money? He hasn't been out of jail long. No, he has not. Okay, well, that stinks. Um, like, I feel bad for his kid who currently plays a like the... And in, in the Braves organization, it's like I'm. But like you know, you read you read that expert, and you just wonder what kind of sex Darren Dalton is up to. Now I read that, and I just wonder um, how many fucking eighty year olds has Buff Bagwell fucked at this point. Oh, and uh, Patty Rotten just died, so I got to take her to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, so I gotta take that, the... that's that seems to be a, a disconnect with real life, what you would do in that scenario. Well the hospital can resurrect her. 
It's not how hospitals work in the real world either. I, didn't I think say that's where it was. we're disconnected. I didn't say it was. <laughs> Did you hear me say, oh yeah, I gotta take her to the hospital so she can get resurrected, you know, just like in real life. Unless no. you're Jerry Lawler or, or Nick Gage, going to the hospital does not result in you being resurrected from the dead. <laughs> God. Nick Gage. That fucking... It's like, it's weird to call, um, getting fucking wrecked as shit by light tubes a freak light tube incident. Like, but that's exactly what that was. Like, it just hit the right fucking spot and he just became a geyser of blood. And he didn't want to go to the hospital. Of course not. It's Nick fucking Gage. He's the man. <laughs> show, show <a> respect. <laughs> it's Nick Gage. He's the fucking man. Who's the fucking man? He's the fucking man. <laughs> He's Nick fucking Gage. Flex. <laughs> Ah, goody, Patty Rotten is back alive. So now we gotta go back in that cave so we can uh, beat the boss and get the second Your Sanctuary song. Is that a hospital or a manor? <laughs> well, we're in the Happy Happy Cult Village. Uh... And that's the hospital in the village. It's just in a house. Of course. That's just how it works here, Will. I don't ask oh, questions. Marcel Marceau playing the trumpet over there. Did you seriously just make a Marcel Marceau reference? Yeah, I don't know why you'd be playing an actual trumpet. You should just be miming playing a trumpet. Yes, yes, that is exactly what Marcel Marceau is. <laughs> it doesn't really even make that much sense. Well, there it was like a mime. There was the first mime I thought of. <laughs> Other than the very racist Mr. Mime, also created by Japanese people. There was an album release called The Best of Marcel Mar Marceau, and it was, I believe, 40 minutes of silence followed by a round of applause. And that sounds like the greatest fucking gimmick <laughs> ever for an album. Oh, have you never heard of, um, 432, I think is what it's called? Oh, the, uh, classic... Oh, by John Cage? Yeah. Yes, John Cage. And yeah. it might not be the exact... I know so much... It's 433. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> 433. Um, I'm very not knowledgeable about it, since I got it wrong. Um... <laughs> Yes, the... I'll, I'll link it. I'll link it for those of you who haven't heard it. It will change the way you think about music. Well, uh, Patty just died again, so we're just gonna reload really quick. That is the one problem. Like, th I will say that is one of the problems with Earthbound is that when you get a new party member. Like, especially Patty here, they aren't level up t to where you are, or even close. Like, she starts at a level 1. So, if she gets hit twice by enemies at this point, she dies. And when you're going through a passageway to uh, beat a boss, that's not easy to avoid her dying. Like, it's just not... Because my character's pretty damn powerful, and I can take out most of these enemies in one, two hits. But she gets hit once, and she needs healing. So, yeah. It, it's just, it's not good. In, in fairness, NTQ, when it comes to 433, that's not necessarily the pretentious... The, the necessarily pretentious thing related to that piece. It's not about the notes they're not playing. It's about the I the concept that that the music is the ambiance around it. <laughs> that even when you aren't playing something, there is noise being made. I agree it's also really fucking stupid and pretentious, but 
I should say stupid, I think it is incredibly pretentious, and I don't get it. But I'm not a smarty smart. Well, my mom is a piano instructor. I wish she would teach some of her kids 433 instead of old time rock and roll. <laughs> There are certain forms of music that I wish learned 433. <laughs> well, like, 433, it reminds me, like, in the heyday of jukeboxes, uh, Columbia released uh, a record called Three Minutes of Silence. And it was a blank record with nothing recorded on it. And it was because people were complaining they would go to a bar, they'd go to someplace that had a jukebox, and they could barely talk to anyone. So, if you wanted to talk, you could play three minutes of silence. And they still That's got their amazing. fucking money. Yeah, it's brilliant! That That is, it is an absolutely brilliant way to make money without, like, fleecing people. Because that is, because you cannot argue that it isn't money well spent by a specific person that wants three minutes of silence in a bar. Yeah, it, it is absolutely... A fucking brilliant scam. Like, honestly. No, but I, you know what? I don't even think it's a scam. Oh, no. I, if you know what you're doing, it, like, it wasn't created to be a scam. It was created for people who. D it was a low. It was an incredibly low cost, dare I say, no cost way, other than the material it makes to, to, produ to produce the record itself. Mm hmm. For, for a certain subsect of people to get exactly what they wanted. Oh yeah, no, it, it was genius. Like, a scam implies deceiving somebody. <laughs> this was not deceiving anybody. Yes. I will say Full 33 is the most cultured and classy thing we've ever talked about during any of these streams. So I'd like to follow up with something incredibly crass. <laughs> if, I, if, if I may. By all means. I was hoping you would. <laughs> well, we can go back Probably to- Probably somebody else had something, I couldn't think of anything. Uncultured, all the and, and, oh. uncultured and crass, we could talk about our friend, uh, Ed Wood, trying to get bu trying to hire Buff Bagwell as a prostitute, and him refuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how long ago was that? I think I kind of remember that. Ah, uh, god, probably like two, three years ago. Like right, I wanted to book him on. The, I think he wanted to book him on the show that I went to, <laughs> or book him that weekend. Well, no, I think it was book under the guise of booking for ISW. Like it was like book him as a prostitute, but under the guise that uh, to have him work ISW that weekend. But yeah. I shoot someone, you can't always stop new. <laughs> That's why I'm very mad at prostitutes! Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Taylor! Taylor. <laughs> Do you remember that part? <laughs> God damn it, James Taylor! Why are you singing about to the children about prostitutes? <laughs> <laughs> Back before Isaac Hayes had to quit the show because of Scientology. I mean, I'll, I'll, on a related note, I think James Taylor is probably one of the, one of my more favorite um, cameos on on The Simpsons. <laughs> Just because I I heard so much James Taylor when I was coming up because he's from North Carolina. Come on, raise he, up, take your shirt off, twist it's around. It's not what I was sighing about, it's the fact that I'm from South Carolina. <laughs> Even Come on, then. raise up, take your shirt off, twist it around your head, spin it like an helicopter. Okay, will you let me finish? Oh, of course, I'm sorry, it's just whenever I hear either of those, my thought immediately fucking goes to that stupid song. So I apologize. I was there, <laughs> I remember that year, 2001. Not necessarily the most notable thing that happened that year, but I digress. James Taylor was... Uh, South Carolina was apparently so bereft of musical talent, we had to import from North Carolina. And because James Taylor liked, liked to sing about Carolina being on his mind. I love James Taylor. 
I like James Taylor too, but when you hear so so somebody so much, at least in my case, especially at a young age, you come to resent that person. See, that's funny that you have that for fucking James Taylor, but I grew up listening to a metric fuckload of Queen, and they are still probably like. They are still easily in my top five favorite bands of all time. I, I will them. say this. I don't think James Taylor is nearly as good as Queen. <laughs> well, I didn't say that, but my point is... is well, that... I, I think that might be a difference. <laughs> Maybe if I grew up listening to Queen, because I think Queen is substantially better than James Taylor, in my opinion... <laughs> Guys, just, just based on my personal preference, then maybe I wouldn't feel that way. Oh god, Mondo Mole! Okay. But I, I grew up listening to, to so many, I would say, good, but certainly not great musicians, a, a metric shit ton, that, that, that it would, that it would not, it would, uh, that, it would, that, I, that I would grow to resent them because they, but just because they didn't have, in my opinion, the chops to stand the test of ten years of time oh, listening shit. to them all the time. Okay, Mono Mole is not weak to freeze. I'm gonna go with fire. Hopefully, fire will do some good with him. Should he use shield? That's not good. I will say that I, I believe there, there is one person that from South Carolina, or related to South Carolina, that I believe stands the test of time. Darius Rucker. <laughs> no, no, not Darius Rucker. Um, James Brown. James Brown is probably the best musician by far to come out, to, to, to be correlated with the state of South Carolina. I think he is more associated with Georgia than he is South Carolina in his professional career. Oh, Will, speaking of James Brown, did you see the uh, Jordan Peele reenacting the infamous uh, James Brown, I am high on something, but I have no idea what interview? <laughs> I have not. Um... Oh, God. If you look up uh, Jordan Peele, aka Peele from Key and Peele, James Brown, you will find it. And if you don't know the backstory, uh, James Brown was arrested, I believe it was, this was 1991, for domestic assault. Um, and... Oh gosh, I'm getting James Brown and Chuck Berry's arrest confused. Chuck yeah, Berry's was indecent exposure, wasn't it? No, no, no. Chuck Der Berry's was unlawful filming because he had cameras set up in the restaurant oh, yes! of his <laughs> restaurant. Where he he was, sure you know, did, didn't he? Where he so was like, I but, with, uh, with, no, with no particular place to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, James Brown was arrested for uh, domestic abuse. And so he goes on this like headline news like AM sh interview show to discuss his arrest and he is fucked out of his mind and literally the first thing I believe the first things out of his mouth are living in America <laughs> so He was the godfather of soul during that interview <laughs> <laughs> but James Brown, unheralded Simpsons guest appearance. And wait oh, a minute, yeah, wait I mean, a minute! A very good one. Wait a minute, wait a minute! This thing was a double bolted! I didn't <laughs> feel like it. Hey, I feel you, man. <laughs> Will's lucky, he gets to claim James Brown. I'm trying to think of who I've got. The best I could come up with is John Michael Montgomery. <laughs> I've got far- I've got far- Who is John Michael Montgomery? That doesn't really bode well for for for, you, for Kentucky <laughs> country country singer. I guess Bill are Monroe. Are you, just, are you talking just generally Kentucky or where you're from in Kentucky? No, oh, generally. Like yeah, if we're talking like specifically like towns we're from, then like the best I've got is Lucky Boy's Confusion. Which is like in my case, really honestly, when people think of South Carolina and music, they think of Hootie and the Blowfish, and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, they should be. Hootie's thinking. from Colum Hootie was was founded in Columbia at the University of South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina is where I was born and raised. Fuck Hootie and the Blowfish, I hate them. <laughs> well, 
if like if we're doing Illinois, I or Illinois, I got fucking so much like. I have Cheap Trick from Rockford, which is close to where my girlfriend grew up. Um, I could always talk about TNA Impact General Manager Billiam Corbin. So, oh, God. <laughs> I got you, a lot. Did you, watch the, you watched the whole show with us, right, Kyle? Except for the opening twenty minutes, yeah. Like once I got. But a... you saw you saw Billiam Corgan's Titan Tron. Oh yes. No, I was the one who pointed out that Billiam Corgan's Titan Tron is nothing with Smashing Pumpkins videos, including my <laughs> favorite video today, which is just him fucking driving an ice cream truck with James Eha in a dress, and then they paint the ice cream truck, and then everyone kicks Billy Corgan out of the ice cream truck. <laughs> Do you remember when Tarantula came out and they had a contest to, to like, um, I can't what I'm thinking of. Like, it was like a green screen behind him, and like the contest was to film something or create something to put up behind them and, um, and basically make their music video for them. I don't remember that one, but if we're talking about MTV contest, does anyone fucking remember the Metallica in a big rig contest? Okay, so when Load came out, MTV ran a fucking contest which was basically have Metallica come to your home and perform a concert for you and your friends and family. And basically there were four like contest winners and there were four fucking 18-wheeler trucks and like each person picked a truck and one of the trucks had Metallica in it. And I remember this contest for one small insignificant reason. Um, there was like a woman, one of the women had won the trucks and like the truck pulls up and the three trucks that don't have Metallica in it have like a whole bunch of merch for everyone and copies of the album in advance and like still a pretty good fucking prize, but it's obviously it's not Metallica playing in your backyard. Uh, so, the truck has arrived and everything, and, like, this woman is disappointed because she didn't win the Metallica concert, and her, like, five-year-old daughter is, like, on her knee and, and says, Mama, when's rock and roll coming? And all I could think was, I kind of want someone to just refer to a popular band as just rock and roll <laughs> like or a band to get popular and have the name rock and roll because that's fucking genius <sighs> good times i'm trying to find it but i was looking for the tarantula music video because somebody didn't actually get a really good one with ecw footage like i, I just simply remember it like it was it was high quality like really like good cuts like but it does not seem to be on the internet anymore and it was eventually used for a tna pay-per-view um sacrifice i think i was surprised to fucking hear the decay having uh marilyn manson as their theme because I will be, uh, for Kelsey's birthday, Kelsey, my lovely girlfriend, uh, we'll be seeing Marilyn Manson for probably the seventh or eighth time she loves Marilyn Manson. Um, so we'll be seeing him live in, uh, Milwaukee in a week. And... I was surprised to fucking hear that the Decay had a Marilyn Manson theme song. Because that song is actually really fucking good. Ah, oh, shit. Fuck. God damn it. Alright, gotta... I gotta fight a tree that's gonna burst into flames and fuck me over, goody. So yeah, Illinois has got a lot of choices. South Carolina, not so many. Kentucky has Bill Monroe, My Morning Jacket. There has to be somebody big in country music that was from Kentucky. 
Or, but was Allison Krauss from Kentucky? No, she was not. <laughs> the, what, the, 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 the bluegrass stain. You have to have like at least somebody rem, rem, remotely influential and famous in bluegrass, right? Will, we're the bluegrass state because we have bluegrass. Like actual geographical. It's it's a region. It's where I live. Uh, Yeah, Bill Monroe. It has to be formed. Is it well, from well, Kentucky? Bill Monroe. Bill Monroe is the founder. Is the father of bluegrass music. He wrote the song "Blue Moon." There Kentucky. you go. He's the father of a genre of music that pretty much everybody in the country is aware of, even if they don't like it. I kind of wanted to try to find somebody from a genre of music that I like. <laughs> Not a big fan of bluegrass, huh? Or, or country, or western, for that matter. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, we, I, grew we, in, I grew into liking old country music. We have both kinds, country and western. <laughs> well, well, hold on. You do not have western. <laughs> then I've got to ask, so you aren't into country, you aren't into bluegrass, are you into blues? Yes. Okay, so you are. So you don't hate. You don't hate all of CBGBs. Got it. Ah, good times. The father of a certain style of music. The fa not the godfather. The grandfather. He's the father. Which at the time, I'm guessing, counted more than being the mother of something. You know, just to, is there was a different time. You know, people people were sexist back then. Yeah, it was it was the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> just giving them the right to vote, you know. <laughs> I mean, he was he was a product of his era. She's getting those I'm gonna look for just like something ridiculous. So, Billy Ray Cyrus, apparently from Kentucky. Flat I know. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of claiming this person. <laughs> now he went to Georgetown College, which I do want to talk about because I think it's a unique college. Correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that the college where you have to be from Kentucky to attend? I don't think so. It's it's uh. There, there was a co there's a college like that, isn't it? Yeah. In Kentucky, where you like, where you pretty much have to be from the state to attend. That was that's the purpose of its existence. Is to I don't think so. I don't think so because because Georgetown, Georgetown has really good basketball, and they get transfers from all over the place. So I don't think that's the place. Uh, all right. <sighs> no, I'm actually not sure. I'm gonna look it up. Look what up. What I just described. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear you, Will. That's why I asked. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I could have sworn I, I, I saw a college, and like one of, the, one of the big things about it was that was that it's it specifically is was designed to accommodate attendees only from the state of Kentucky. Uh, so so you're, you're thinking see, you're 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 thinking of UCLA. It's a common mistake. <laughs> Actually, I'm thinking of UNC. <laughs> that was a, that was an aggravating time for my sister, who had higher aspirations for college than I did. <laughs> God, I'm so white. <laughs> oh God, damn it! My character caught a fucking cold. <laughs> He'll be dead within the hour. Well, he lose actually will. He loses four health hit points like every ten seconds. I wasn't joking. He will be dead within the hour, right? Yeah, yeah. He he will be. I, mean, I was I was lampooning the ridiculousness of it all, but isn't that is that not true? I don't know, but I healed myself, so I'm good. I just gotta. Oh dang, jig is up. <laughs> Just gotta go across this bridge. Losing my Amazon Prime student uh, 
exemption at pay full price now. It's still worth it. Especially just for the streaming. Oh yeah, not, I'm, it is worth it at $99 just for the streaming. And for the ship. Mm -hmm. ba -da -ba -ba. But it is certainly better at 50 bucks. Maybe I can find a way to bullshit it. I still, I still, apparently I still have it until um, August 18th. So then, you know, it's not month. worth it to bullshit it because there's actually more benefits when uh, when you have it not as a student. Did you put it away? I do use Netflix and Hulu a whole lot more than Amazon, like, instant. Top shelf. Try top shelf. But my roommate uses a lot, so I'm getting some use out of it. I didn't put it away. You must have. And, yeah, I couldn't find this school. I, I know it exists. Maybe, and maybe I'm thinking of a different school in every state, but there are, I know there are schools that exist, like, specifically, like, to just, to, just for students in that state. And not, not like, not as like a joke like UNC or UCLA. Which that defeats the purpose. Well, it's, it's a, it's a bygone, it, it, it's a bygone from a different era where, where the, where the purpose was to benefit the state and give, and give people who wouldn't have a chance to that, at a, at a, at a school education. I think it's probably been amended in some sense since then to where you, where you get, you, you do get a scholarship if you just being from the state. Honestly, I think this is probably as good a spot as any to end it since I've got a fucking mushroom on my head and my and Patty Rotten's dead. So I am going to call it for the night. Just get a little uh, savey state magic there. Uh, boop. And this has been Kyle Replays His Childhood. I'm Kyle. That was Will. And Seth. And good night and go fuck yourself. <laughs>